Hey folks, wanted to go on a detailed uh, um, talk about why I chose this barrel. Um, some people wrote in, said some great things. Thank you for writing in, reminding me that, you know, I get so excited when I get something like this in. It makes me feel so happy that um, uh, I forget to tell uh, everything that the reasons why I chose this and I'm willing to pay 30 bucks for this barrel. And it's brand new, it's very important. Um, and we'll get into why. Okay, this lip here is the primary purpose why I've been stocking this so long. If I were to go to the used barrel guy and try and buy this, it's going to cost me 20 bucks. Okay, this is going to cost me more than a 15, uh, 55 gallon drum because they know what this is, okay? And they know how much they go for and they know they're not prevalent. 55 gallon drums are prevalent, that's why we get them cheap. These are not. This drum is not. Not with its designs, and you'll find out why soon. Okay, so the main reason is this lip right here. We have a lip up here, which is going to be very important, but this lip right here is extremely important for when I bury this, okay? When it goes, first my five-gallon bucket comes up to here. So I only have to dig as much right now as another five-gallon bucket. That's the first thing, to get this in the same spot my old five-gallon bucket cache went. Okay, the second thing is this lip allows me with my hori hori knife just to slide along the side with the uh, beveled edge around so it doesn't scar uh, this or hurt the drum so I can get that hori hori knife down pretty deep, can I? And I can just go around and score like that up and down, right? And then I can do this and I should be able to pop it right out of the ground because of this bevel. If this were a straight cylinder, it could concave, and now I'm gonna have to dig all the way down to get this out of the ground. You see what I mean? So this bevel is very, extremely important. The next thing this bevel does, along with this up here, is allows me to do two wraps of paracord, and I use 750 Grizzly, okay, mil spec. Um, two wraps around down here, two wraps around up here, and then I can run two shoulder straps through and now this becomes a pack and it's the perfect size to be a pack whereas a bigger barrel or a smaller barrel wouldn't do the job and a bigger barrel uh, wouldn't uh, be prudent for that would it and this becomes a pack easy so if I lose all my gear I can pack this out this can become a pack very easily because of its design where a straight cylinder is not going to be as easy to turn into a pack as this is. Although we could do it, but this is just going to be much easier and much more convenient. And I've got a nice plate that's going to rest on my back. Okay, So that's the other reason, and I can control that weight, can I? And because hopefully your weight's low, like it always should be, right? Uh, now let's get into um, the lid. Okay, so now you understand why this design is so important. The lid, I don't want to use barrel for a burying a cache because I want to make sure this lid has not been abused, has not been opened and closed 10 times. You notice I'm not closing this all the way anymore because I'm not going to do that until I actually use it. Okay, because I don't want this lid uh, messed up, scored, scraped, all that stuff. And if you're buying a used barrel, there's no telling how many times it's been opened and closed, right? And if the seal is even any good in the cap, if there is one there that's not rotten, right? So that's another reason why uh, I don't want to use barrel, okay? Um, I just, I don't. And plus, the cost isn't going to save me any money. Go price something like this out at your used barrel place. It's going to be more than the 55-gallon drum, okay? The other thing was the lock on the ring is a must for me. Because if I want to put something in here like a firearm, it must be locked. That is the law. Okay, So that's something that's got to go on. And that ring is very stout. I feel comfortable with this seal. Um, you know, And uh, that's the reasons why I just wouldn't go with a used barrel. And even if I found one, say in North Carolina or something, that's shipping on something like this is already going to be half the price of me purchasing this brand new where I know it came from. The other reason why I like the idea of a new barrel is I've seen what people put in used barrels and I would never drink out of them because folks, whatever we put in the barrel absorbs into this plastic, okay, over time. And conversely, when, when we go to use these for potable water, if we're using a used barrel that had some chemicals in it, conversely, it's going to leach back out into our water over time, isn't it? Okay, so I just personally won't use used potable water. Now, for showering, for other things, 
uh, for, you know, whatever, fine. But not for stuff I'm going to be drinking because there's certain elements we just can't filter out of water, okay? Um, and it just won't. It bonds and it gets through every filter out there and that's just the nature of the beast. We'd have to run a reverse osmosis system just about for some of these barrels for what they've been used for. You know what I mean? And in a prepper situation, we're just not going to be able to do that. Now let's get into... So that explains why I don't even want to use barrel ever for my potable water needs, okay? For bathing, showering, things like that, yeah, sure, not a big deal. But for potable water, no, I've just seen too many... Whoa, what I've seen in some barrels, uh-uh, don't want anything to do with them. Um, so, and also, you know, the barrel guy's not going to give you a barrel fax. So be aware of that. Uh, let the buyer beware. Uh, I, I suggest caution when buying used barrels anyway, okay? Unless you're just using them for junk or whatever, you know exactly where they came from. From purchase to buying it used, okay? And you're comfortable with what was in it. So that's my cautionary note on used barrels. Um, okay, I've covered everything. Um, I've covered the digging up, the fact that it's a pack, the fact that I've got the lock on this, the fact that I've got a brand new rubber seal, the fact that this, you know, makes it a pack, right? Because of this design, it will be easy to make it into a pack with paracord, which will be in here already, right? So um, the next thing I want to say is go out and watch Penny University's video if you're thinking about a cache on pros and cons of burying caches. I think they did a good job on cautionary tales of people who bury caches. And that brings me to, no matter how good I think this barrel is, okay, this is what's happening also. All right, when I do this, all right, I'm putting... Uh, the, this is the first bag. This is a basic kitchen bag, and this is just going on first, all right? Because, all right, now you want it over the top too, and then we're going to duct tape, and we're going to duct tape under this lip. That's another reason why this lip is so vitally important for burying, okay? So then we're going to duct tape twice around it. Then we're going to put a contractor bag over it again right, or something of very thick mill plastic, hopefully about three mil or greater. We're gonna slide that over it and it will go around the bottom too. We won't tape the bottom, but we will tape again, a ring there and a ring here. So see the double lips are very important when it comes to burying this, because I don't care how good you think something might be sealed, it can be trouble. Then here in Maine, I have to worry about frost, okay? So that's another reason why um, I want something like this that I can use the hori hori to get into. But then I'll put foam over the top, two inch foam that will come out eight inches on all sides to keep the frost from curling under and getting to my barrel, okay? And then plywood will be on top of that. And that will allow, if someone steps on it, it's going to give more of a, a decent sturdy feel um, for uh, the earth and whatnot. In the winter, I'm not going to worry about it, but in the summer, it would feel different to someone's foot should they ever get near it, right? So that's going to allow me to bury it close to the top, yet at the same time give it some real good uh, cover, right? And, uh, and of course, in my environment, you know, the foam is a must if you're going to bury anything. Otherwise, good luck trying to get it out of the ground. You know what I mean? It's just not going to happen. <clears throat> so the foam is very important. Um, and another thing, uh, the reason why I wanted this barrel is, should I decide to ever want to bury a KSG, it fits perfect, okay? So that was another thing that just had me laughing, you know? The KSG fit perfect in there. Oh, so happy. My fly pole's perfect. Everything's just great. Now, I wanted to get into when you pack your cash, okay? People, you can't just throw things in there either. Watch again Penny University's video. You got a double bag and put absorbers in, moisture and oxygen absorbers in these, in whatever you pack in here, because if you're going to leave it five years, this is going to condensate, okay, over time. So you got to have uh, moisture absorption within the barrel, okay? You also have to have it in everything you're going to pack in there, and it's got, I would double wrap it if it at all can be ruined by moisture, okay? And make sure that each one has its own absorber in it, all right? and uh, use the vacuum pack uh, 
you know, food, food uh, storage systems to do that. And that's going to save you a lot of grief. Uh, again, watch the video of Penny University and, and some of you might get a good chuckle out of that. People think you can just bury something and throw your junk in it and it's going to be fine five years later. Uh-uh, wrong answer. Everything's going to be ruined. Okay? So everything has to be packed specifically right in order to make a cash work right. And this barrel is specifically right in order to make this cash work right. Okay? That's part of the reason why I don't mind and absolutely love that I only paid 30 bucks for this. Okay? So... Those are some things, food of thought, more detail on why I specifically chose a barrel like this, why I absolutely love this item, and I'm so happy with it right now uh, in this moment. You know, I am just so happy uh, with this purchase. Um, and again, I waited over a year for it, didn't I? So yeah, you bet I'm happy. So I've covered everything I think that's important and pertinent to uh, why, you know, I won't buy a used barrel, why... I wanted this specific barrel. Uh, I need something I can turn into a pack easy. These two rings afford that. It's clean. It's never been used. So I know that I can actually truly use it for potable water. And I'm not going to worry about that. And, um, and the lid hasn't been abused, dried out, or it still fits superbly. It hasn't been uh, used a lot. And so these are the reasons why I would go new. And if you're going to bury anything, remember... It's not as easy as digging a hole and throwing whatever you've got in there. Go watch that video by Penny University. So I hope this explanation has been good for you. And I hope maybe for some of you it expands a little bit more reasoning as to why I think the way I do and do what I do. Um, there's usually 10 extra details as to why I've done something. Jim out.